this is Kim with Mom's Creative Moments. Welcome back to my channel. Are you ready for a passport to adventure? That's the name of the newest collection or one of the newest collections from Creative Memories so far this year and it works out beautifully with my Ireland trip because we have a bunch of pages of traveling to get there. So I've been using that as we've been um, starting my Ireland pages. I'm continuing that travel um, today, but I'm also going to share with you the project recipe that goes along with this collection. So I hope it's helpful for you, and I hope it's something that you will enjoy and be able to easily recreate for yourself. Um, please leave me a message in the comments and let me know what you think. Let's check out my workspace and we'll get started. All right, so this is my workspace for today, and we are back to our Ireland adventure, but you may have, um, you may recall, oh, and I just got my, just got my nails done for St. Patrick's Day, so I thought I would show, sh uh, show those off just a little bit, um, super fun, um, hopefully you are ready, and as they say, everyone is Irish on March 17th, so get ready, because it's going to be a fun day. Um, but for us, it's going to be fun all year because we're going to kind of be celebrating because we'll be on this trip for most of the year working on this trip. So today we're actually going on even more of an adventure because we are going to go ahead and do the project recipe that goes along with Passport to Adventure, which is the um, newest destination uh, collection from Creative Memories and it's a super fun collection. I've been using it in my uh, Ireland videos thus far um, so hopefully you have liked what you have seen. We're going to use some more of that today and we're going to create this really cute layout that was designed for us um, by our Creative Memories home office team and I'm going to show you just how to do it. As um, per the usual, we have a finished layout here to, to see. So those of you who are visual, this is really helpful, I find. I'm a very visual person. Um, so if I look at this, I can see how things come together much more easily by, by viewing it on here. Then I can also look at the sketch down here. The sketch is color-coded, co color and there are also letters and the letters correspond to each of the pieces that are here on the cutting guide, which is on page two. The cutting guide is also color-coded, which corresponds to the different pieces here on, um, on the, the sketch that we see. Now, um, let me go ahead and share with you the different pieces I have, um, the different products I have here on my desktop so that you can gather those and we can get started. So I have my photos which I have cropped to the sizes that are indicated here on the project recipe. I have one, two, three, four, five photos cropped to three by three. I have two cropped to five and a half by three and a half and I have one that is a standard four by six and I actually have a couple of extras so we're going to see how I can maybe sneak in another photo or two or maybe not just depending on what how I feel and what it looks like so we'll see how that goes. For now though I'm just going to set those aside up here so that they're kind of out of the way. I have the um, passport stamp deck uh, designer paper it has kind of this grid on the back side. I have the arrows, the green paper with the arrows. I have the um, multi polka dot paper with the different modes of transportation and all the different colored polka dots. Then I have some canary yellow cardstock and some white cardstock. Okay, so those are the papers we're going to use today. And I'm just going to set my page over there, get it out of the way. I also have my compass decorative punch. So this is going to punch some embellishments that we're going to use. And just for fun, I got out the stamp decorative border punch that was, re was released at the same time as this collection. We may do something fun with that. I'm not sure. So we'll see. 
um, what happens with that. But for for now, I'm just going to kind of keep it up here to remind me that it's a there's possibilities there. I also have my permanent and repositionable adhesives, which you know I use a lot. So those are going to go over there till we're used to or till we're ready for them. And I have the smallest circle in our custom cutting circle patterns along with my red blades. So we're going to use those also. And so before we get that far though, we have some cutting to do as you can see. So we have two designer papers we need to use plus the white cardstock which we're going to cut. And I think I had the yellow cardstock out here just because I wasn't sure which one I was going to prefer to use. So we will consider which one is best. Probably use white, that's what it calls for here. Um, but we'll see. Let's, let's decide which of these papers we're going to cut, how we're going to cut them. So we need one that's going to be the dividing strips. We need another one that's going to be the wider strips on either side, and then um, they will also correspond to some other mats and circles. So um, let's see. I think I think I want the green paper to be. Um, Oh, it says we need two sheets of designer paper for our base, but I think I'm going to just build this directly on my pages, so there won't be a there won't be a designer paper on the base because I'm going to uh, build this directly on my Spargo page. But if you don't have a page that you are building it on for your album that you're working in, um, I would definitely choose some designer papers that. Um, are in the collection to be your base papers. And I would make sure that they are maybe the more tone on tone um, papers or something that's maybe a little bit less eye catchy. Um, this green one would be a great one for a base. Um, but I'm not going to use it as a base today. I'm going to use the green one as the um, dividing pieces and it'll be mats for a couple of the photos. And then the uh, passport punch is going to be the um, the decorative element that goes around the edge. Okay, and then we'll have the Spargo in the middle and on the, in the corners. All right, I think that's going to work well. And as far as what we are going to use um, for the other mat here and here and for the uh, behind the circles, I think I'm going to use the yellow. I think I'm going to use yellow cardstock for that. Yeah, let's see how that works. Okay, so we're going to just keep one piece of cardstock. So we've got two designer sheets, one sheet of canary yellow cardstock, and our two. Spargo pages that we're going to build on when we get all these pieces cut and there's a lot of pieces So bear with me here. Let me grab my trimmer and we'll get started with that We're going to save the cardstock for last. So I'm just going to set that over there Let's go ahead and start with the designer paper. That's going to be the wider element around the edges I need four pieces that are one one and a quarter and then we're going to trim them a little bit shorter so we're going to go with <laughs> let's let me see i'm going to cut just to conserve a little paper and have a larger piece at the bottom i'm going to say one and a quarter two and a half five inches so i'm going to cut this at five inches All right, and this is just gonna allow me to trim the bottom off. So we're gonna cut this at five inches. Then I need these four strips to be 10 and a quarter inches long. So I'm gonna move this arm out. I'm gonna make sure my foot on my arm is out so that my arm stays at the right level. 
move a couple of these tools so I have a little more room to get this all in frame for you. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to turn this horizontally and I'm going to put this at 10 and a quarter. There's 10 and a quarter. We're going to cut that off and that's going to allow me to keep this piece all together for use in something else on down the road. Okay, now I'm going to cut each of these into one and a quarter inch pieces and I should have four one and a quarter inch pieces. So here's one and two. I'm measuring on the right side of my cutting line. Anything less than an inch and three quarters you can measure on the right side of the cutting line and it's really better to do that because you typically will have more paper the balance of your paper on this side and you can keep that a little straighter which is nice if you you know push it up against the shoulder here alright so then I'm going to take the, the rest of this and we need another piece that is three and a half inches. So we're going to cut a piece that's three and a half inches. By the way, this is a little bit different than what you're what you're looking at on here. I'm, I've just added these two that are the same length together. That gives me three and a half inches. And I'm going to cut this at nine and a half horizontally. Again, I'm doing this so that the piece I cut off on the end is larger and I can do more with it, okay? So nine and a half inches this way. Then we're gonna turn this back horizontally and cut it in half at that one and three quarter mark so that we have two pieces that are one and three quarters by nine and a half, okay? So those are gonna go down here. Then we're going to take the remaining three and a half inches, okay, three and a half inches, and we're going to cut three mats that are three and a half by three and a half. Okay, so we're gonna cut this, or turn this horizontally, we're gonna cut three mats that are each three and a half inches. One, two, and here's three. Oops, don't want to fold my paper. Okay. And then this piece is extra. All right. Now we're going to keep these extra pieces handy because we are going to punch one of them in, a, in just a minute. So don't let them get too far away. I just don't want them to get mixed up in the pieces I'm going to be using for my layout, which are right here. All right, so now we're gonna proceed to the green paper. And the green paper, um, the green paper is a bit directional. It is an arrow, but it could go either direction and be just fine. So I'm not gonna worry about it too terribly much. I am going to go ahead and cut with my arrows facing that way going to cut down through the arrows and I'm going to make I'm going to make one two three four five six six one half by twelve inch pieces alright so we're going to cut essentially we're cutting three inches off but we're cutting six half inch pieces and these will go around the design of our layout so here we go. Here's three. This is number four. Number five. And one more is number six. All right, so six of those. Now I need a piece that is four by six. So I'm going to cut 
I'm going to measure on the left hand side over here to the four inch mark on my grid. I'm using the shoulder at the bottom to keep my paper straight and going to cut right there. And we're going to turn this sideways. Put my paper in the way. Turn this sideways and cut it at six inches so that we have two mats that are four by six. And those are gonna just hang out up there until I need them. Then we're going to cut one more that is going to end up being four and a half by six and a half. All right, so that means we need to cut, this has us cutting a half of an inch off all the way down, making an extra half inch strip. I don't know that we need to do that, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and follow the directions. So now we have an extra half inch strip We'll stick over there and we're going to cut at six and a half. So we have a four and a half by six and a half inch mat. Okay, so that mat's gonna go up there. And this piece we're going to punch from in just a little bit. So we're gonna keep that handy. All right, now we're going to use our yellow cardstock, canary yellow cardstock. And I need two mats that are three and a half by three and a half. So we're going to measure to the three and a half mark on the grid here on the left. Close the arm. And turn this horizontally so we can cut two more at three and a half. Three and a half and three and a half. So those are also mats. They're going to go up there. And then this we're going to use to punch with. And we are done cutting. So I'm going to go ahead and put my... I, re, I do reserve the right to grab that again, though, in case we need it. But I think we'll be okay. All right, now I'm going to use my custom cutting circle. My small custom cutting circle. I'm going to use my yellow cardstock. So whatever cardstock you are using, you're going to use the tail end of that three and a half inch strip. And we're going to trim or cut five circles from the inside of this template using the red blade of the custom cutting system. This is going to be smaller than the the circle punch, the CM circle punch, you can see this circle is going to measure almost an inch and a half across, which is um, smaller than the punch. The punched circle is an inch and three quarters. So, you know, it's, it's up to you, but when you see what we use it for, you may want to go ahead and just cut it the way it's designed. Or you may be okay with um, with using the punch. It's, the punch is a speed tool. This is a speed tool as well, but the punch definitely for me is a lot faster than cutting each individual circle out like this. So it just it sort of depends on what size you want and what you have available to you. Not everyone has the circle punch. Although the circle punch is a great baseline tool. So if you are new to scrapbooking and you are just, you know, gradually building up your tool collection, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend the circle and the square punch because they are very handy. Okay, so I've got five of these circles. And now we are going to punch some compasses. We're going to punch some compasses using our green. All right, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to punch four of these. Let's see if we can see it from the other side. Not super well. That's kind of a dark 
a dark abyss in there and if I'm going to add my green paper yeah I can barely see it so we're just going to be winging it what else is new huh okay so let's see we're going to go there aha uh -huh. almost I think I cut off the edge so I'm going to push this all the way to the back bumper Sometimes you don't have to push it all the way to the back bumper and you can still get a, a good punched design. But you can see on this one, if you look close enough, I missed the tip of that bottom piece. Okay, so I'm just going to punch I need four of these total. And I'm trying to st strategically work them with my paper so that I don't, so I have as much of this paper left that I can use for something else, right? That's constantly the game that I play in my head. What else can I use this paper for? All right, and we're going to take this piece and we're going to punch. Is that going to be wide enough? Whoa. Only if I do it perfectly. Let's try it. We'll try it and see. Okay, it's going to go all the way back. It's going to go all the way back and I need to have it centered perfectly. Let's see if I can do it. I don't, you have to really trust yourself. But I also have another scrap over there I can use, so no big deal, right? Let's see. Woohoo! Alrighty. It worked. Yay. Okay, so those are extra. They're just going to hang out over there. This one we are done punching with, so I'm going to stick that over there. Alright, now. Let's lay this out and take a look at it and see if we want to do anything in addition to this. First of all, before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and, and adhere my compasses to their little yellow spheres. And actually the tips of the compass kind of stick off the edge of the cardstock, but that's okay. We'll survive, right? It'll all be well, as they say. Okay. This just ma makes it so that I don't have to track down little loose pieces. Or I have less little loose pieces to keep track of anyway. And I did just go ahead and use the one that I know that I cut the tip off of. And I don't know if we'll even notice. So we'll, we'll have to look at that at the end and see if we even notice. Might be empowering for you guys if you can't see it. so that you know there's a margin for error. All right, so here are my five compasses. They're gonna go over there. Let me grab my pages here real quick. Okay, this one's gonna go this way. This one will go this way. Let's grab these pieces and put up on top. All right, so let's go ahead and lay this out. We are going to have each of these. Each of the shorter pieces are going to go on the end down here. And then we're going to have 
one of these along each edge at the top and one along each edge at the bottom like so and I'm going to go ahead and adhere these bottom pieces the the long edge pieces so I'm going to take my adhesive and since these pieces are relatively narrow I'm just going to put strips in five places across the short edge. I'm going to start in the center of my page of my um, cardstock or my page depending on how you're building yours and go ahead and adhere that down. Okay. I'm just going to do that for all four of these pieces. So on each end, in the middle, and then halfway in between each, um, the middle and each of the ends. I really like the white grid paper that's on the back of the passport punch paper. So it's kind of hard for me to decide which one to use, but ultimately I decided that it would be better to add just a little more color and interest to the page by using the passport punch side. Do you know that um, we used to live in Europe with when my husband was active duty in the military, we lived in Europe for a number of years, and um, we traveled all over and thought, oh, we're going to have so many wonderful stamps on our passport. But do you know that traveling in the continental part of Europe, not necessarily the any of the islands that are associated with Europe, but on the continent, um, Traveling on the continent, you don't generally have to show your passport. Literally, you can drive from one country and into another country with the exception of some of the more controlled USSR, previously USSR related um, countries. You can go from one to another and, and no one minds. <laughs> no one asks you who you are, why you're there. They don't even notice. It's kind of interesting. All right, so I'm going to take these wider pieces that we have, and I'm going to actually, before I just arbitrarily punch this, I'm going to take a piece of cardstock and I'm going to punch my stamp decorative border punch and see what this might look like. This has not been, I have not punched anything with this before, so it does have a little bit of oily residue as well, so it's good to kind of work that out before you put use that on your designer paper. So we may punch that one more time, but I just want to see how this might work. And actually, I kind of like that. Actually, I really kind of like that in yellow. So maybe, maybe what I'll do is I'll use a little bit of, the, of additional cardstock and, and add that. I, I really like that. It would just go right here and Let's see here. I'm going to just punch another row of this and see if I've gotten all the lubricant off as much as possible. Okay. Now let me, what did I do with that piece? Here it is. Where 
going to go ahead and I'm just going to punch I'm just going to punch a full row of this. I'm going to punch two full rows actually because we'll need two long pieces. So two full rows of this border and then I'll be right back. Look at these cute little pieces that are left over from this. Wouldn't those be cute to use as, I don't know, somehow as like building blocks? Couldn't you see those as like Legos built together? You could use those as Legos. Oh, that would be so cute. Okay, um, I digressed. I think I'm going to save those. I don't know what I'll use them for, but I have a hard time tossing those out. They're so cute. Okay. Um, we're going to take our repositionable adhesive and we're going to go ahead and just add this to a measure of each one of these borders. I'm going to take this wider section, the one that's made to go on the far ends, and I'm just going to put that, center that right down each one of those almost doesn't make it all the way on this end just barely goes over All right, so now I'm going to, I'm just going to grab some scissors. No need to pull my trimmer out. I'm just going to flip this over so I can clearly see the edge of my paper. And I'm going to trim that off. I'll do the same thing for this one. All right, now we're going to go ahead and adhere these down. So adhesive in just a couple of those places. I'm going to put the edge that I actually cut off towards the bottom. And as I adhere this, I'm going to make sure that it's meeting or as close to the edges the corners of these other strips that I've already laid down. It's not going to touch exactly, but it's going to be close. Okay. All right, now we're going to do the same thing on this side. Now, we're going to take each one of these strips and they are going to go down like so. So we're going to put these right on the edge of there, right on the edge of this one. I would do the top edge, the bottom edge, and then come in here with this one and I'm going to say let's put this on the very outside edge of our border strip so that we don't cover up that um, that other piece that we worked so hard on punching. I'm going to go ahead and get these adhered 
and I will be right back with you, okay? Right, so now we've got all of those uh, put down. Let's decide where our photos are gonna go. All right, so I've got my mats, and according to my project recipe, my mats are my three main mats, not the, so the largest one's going to go right here, and I'm going to turn it so that the arrows are facing to the right, because that's just a more feng shui kind of way to do things, right? And I'm going to add these two larger mats right in here. Excuse me. They're going to go right against the edge of the jeeping according to the picture. Okay, so those are just going to be evenly spaced right in there. Then we're going to have we're going to have well we can use whichever side we want of this part. We could probably turn it over and just use the white side. That might be kind of interesting to do. And we're going to have a yellow piece in the middle of those. And then over here, there's going to be two, possibly three. We may need to get creative here. Okay, so let's lay out our photos and figure out where they're going to go. All right, so this one is going to go in here. Those are my two older girls. This one is my son. These, this is my son and my youngest daughter. They were excited. And this one is my mom and my sister, and that one's going to need to be cut down just a little bit because I cut that at three and a half inches, and that's the same size as our mats. So let's see. Same thing here. I believe that is the same size too. So, but this one is a three inch, and this one is a three inch. And this one shows our route, so I would like to use this one. Maybe we could use it without a mat and kind of put it right up there. This one is cute of my mom and my sister. I could cut that one into a more appropriate size and put that in a matted square, except that then I cut out Emily, who's right back here. But Emily's in this picture, so it might be okay. Or actually, I think that picture is supposed to go there. There we go. Okay, so these two I just need to make into a, a slightly smaller version of themselves. I'm just going to cut a quarter inch off because I, in, I did intend for them to be just a little bit larger. So I don't want to... Um, don't want to impinge on anybody's face and cut anybody off. Does that make sense? I don't want to get the get so excited about cropping that I go ahead and um, crop someone's face because that would not be cool. All right, let's see. Let 
where to crop, where to crop. We're going to do an eighth of an inch from down there, a quarter of an inch from this side, and an eighth of an inch from the top. And then that one will fit better. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and adhere these photos and then we'll talk some more. So talk amongst yourselves. Alright, so now all of the photos are down. We're going to come back here and um, decide where our little um, compasses are going to go. And the white one, or the one that we punched that was not green, is going to go up here, kind of near, <clears throat> near our destination, which was right in that photo. Then we've got another one for each corner of the layout. Okay, so one's gonna go in each one of these corners. I got my photos just a little bit close to um, those areas. So I might wanna go in back in and adjust those photos and move them out just a little bit. Or I could go in with some foam squares and lift the compasses up and so that they're over the edge of the of the photos um, which would also be fine then we can kind of see the area of the photo that's being covered and it it's not going to cover any of the important things for me in any of those so I'm going to just go ahead and add a foam square to each one of these compass rounds and stick it down on top of my photo essentially. Not uh, The foam square is not actually going on my photo. The foam square is going kind of in the corner here. But because it's round, it's, it uh, protrudes beyond the corner and anyway you get my drift all right so then what we need is a few more cute little embellishments we need a journal card for down here at the bottom or we could just journal directly on the page depending on what we want to do we could add some more stickers but we probably don't need too many let's take a look at the at the um, example they've given so they've got some embellishments and kind of a title up here and they've got a journal card other than that they're letting the compasses be the embellishing on this page which I totally think is agreeable um, it looks really nice and it's very well balanced it looks really really well put together so Let's take a look at our page. I haven't put down this one yet. It needs a foam square, but it's gonna need some companion something or others up there. So we'll come up with something and we need some kind of a journal box. So the embellishment pack that comes with this collection has several really cute little journal box uh, pieces. It has little note cards like this, date, location, time. It has a little ticket with a stub, which would be a cute tiny little journal box if that's all you need. Um, there's this one, which actually would be cute because it would match the colors on my page here. Same thing with this one. Write your best memories here. 
we could say I love travel and put that one in here as well but I don't think I'm going to add that one because we don't really have a lot of blue on this page we do have this other one also which is blue or kind of a yellowish tag one which we could add maybe I think maybe I'm gonna go with the green one just just because I think it will add and be a nice touch so we'll add this one in kind of right here and let's see what else can we put with our compass up there we've got an airplane but the airplanes flying in the wrong direction so I don't know if I want to do that we've got arrows we could do more arrows down here we've got luggage which would be cute too could we add something adventure is calling I must go uh, we could say what a view because everybody is looking good and somewhere looking out the window maybe that would be cute what a view and let's see maybe there's something in the embellishment pack that we could add we could say let's go um, you guys know this is the part that takes the longest for me is figuring out the embellishments there are a lot of tags actually in this embellishment pack which is cool and I also have something else I think we could do if we wanted so let's see maybe we could do both of these we could say let's go and what have you I think we'll do that all right so I'm just going to put this flush on the on the page since the sticker there's a sticker also and the compass is going to stick up and we're going to just kind of add this in right here at the top and in the middle the compass a little bit farther down so we can see the globe and things if you got the stamp border maker this one right here that we used then it came with these die cut embellishments that look like stamps so you could actually also add a couple of these if time permits and you want these just fit right into the openings of those punched areas so I would probably I would probably recommend the or use the uh, airplane and maybe maybe the luggage So not the car and not the trolley. We could do we could do the airplane and the luggage and then maybe do the binoculars and 
some tickets and just kind of add those to the corners. That way you're not using them all up on one layout, but you are adding just a little bit to the to um, to embellish your page. I love how they just fit right into the cutout areas. So you can just stick them right in there or you can go ahead and um, get a foam square and make them pop out and look a little bit more three-dimensional that way. That would that seems like it would be a cool thing to do. So definitely up to you. It doesn't that one doesn't really fit going up up vertically and goes needs to go sideways, but I made it go vertical because I don't want it to be sideways on my layout. All right, I think we are about done. Let me know, oh, I didn't secure this, but let me know what you think and if this is a layout that will work well for you. I hope that this, that I hope that you're having fun with this particular collection because it is a really neat one and I think it will be perfect for all of your traveling needs this travel season no matter where you're going. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you have many more creative moments. Until next time, take care.